The following program is rated TV MAL. It contains strong language and is intended only for mature audiences. The Podcasting Dead is available on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and SoundCloud. Make sure to subscribe for more podcasts. And while you're at it, drop us a like. If you want to help support the channel and have access to extra content, secret contest, and more, make sure to search for us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash The Podcasting Dead. Hey, 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 we're live on a Sunday night. We don't have a show to review. Well, we do, but we don't have a new episode to review. We're going to look back on the Rick and Michonne, the ones who live show, and just kind of reflect on it now that we've had the show in its entirety, and we've had a kind of a week to stew on it. Uh, I've got with me in the studio the man in the chair that's keeping all of the um, all of this rolling, Mr. Seth, a.k.a. the Appalachian American. From the men's room go check his channel out what's up what's up thanks for having me man Un- well thank you for being here and despite what matt whitaker says you will not find seth in a men's room <laughs> i don't no. know I just saying just this week i had a little tinkle a little tickle tinkle if you will and the man who uh lo- loves to turn anything homoerotic the one and only <laughs> matthew matthew w dubs what's good hi <laughs> Yay! <laughs> JP will uh, be jumping in with us at some point when he gets home. He's on the way home what now. What's he doing on a Sunday night? I don't know. Probably something church related. JP's gotten really into church. Good on. I you. was. I thought it was going to be the that one one legged one footed lady or something that he talked about that time. No, I think his adventures have gotten a lot more tame it. since he since he got the <laughs> Lord in his life. Lord. His adventures have calmed down quite a bit. Mm. But so we are looking back at the ones who live six episodes of Rick and Michonne United and uh, just kind of reflecting and talking about it, where it could go, all that good stuff. So uh, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Make sure to find us on Patreon, patreon.com slash the podcasting dead. We podcast most Friday nights. Every once in a while, something pops up, but I'd say at least three out of four week, four weeks of the month, you're going to get a, a new podcast on Friday. Usually not related to the walking dead at all. Most of the time we're talking conspiracies, religion, life, you name it. We've probably discussed it, but, uh, so looking back, let's go down up and around. Cause I certainly have my thoughts and they're, I mean, spoiler alert. There's, they're, they're pretty positive, but there definitely are some negatives in there. So I want to hear y'all's feedback and what you thought on the show. Looking back, Matt, starting with you, what'd you think? Loved it. Loved it. <laughs> Give um, us the good, the bad, and the ugly. Let's do that. Let's do yeah. that. For each one of us, let's do the good, the bad, and the ugly. What what I liked about this season, for, for the most part, there like there were episodes that kind of drug on or kind of went lightning quick. Um, I felt like it had like appropriate pacing and action, kind of like uh that paralleled uh like um shows like Breaking Bad or or Better Call Saul. Like it just felt good. <laughs> good dialogue that was very appropriately paced good action very good costume design just really liked that stuff about it but there's um i know we've discussed the episode like where rick just uh was just trying to get his groove back like our emperor feller Oof. and then they they solved a uh uh they, they thwarted a, a major organization in, in in the span of what 45 minutes through the power two of people with a can-do attitude can take out an entire <laughs> military because that's yeah, how real yeah. life works. That's, that's, that's how real life work. Uh, David does beat, uh, or yeah, David beats Goliath. And that is true. He did, he did. All right. Uh, so I guess that kind of sums it all up. Seth, the good, the bad, the ugly. What'd you like about it? What did you not prefer? And what's something that just took you out of it? Um. Okay. So the good. She's in Spanish. Honestly, I thought. Okay, so when we finished Daryl Dixon, I said that that was probably my favorite. It had the most rewatchability, but this actually this topped it. I thought. Okay. I thought this was way better than Daryl, um, and I, I mean that's not that's not discrediting Daryl. You take that, that back. Show. Well, that I'm show was pretty. Ready. That show was good too. Honestly, I'd really like to go back and watch that because I haven't had it. I have not had a chance to rewatch that show, and I usually like to watch things a time or two. Um, let it you know, sink just to it marinate. Yes, exactly. In my brainium. Um, the the bad, which I've said before, I think the writing was a little weak on on characters. Uh, there were there, there was a lot of good, but it was like somebody had to add in like like little one liners that just kind of 
pulled me out as a as somebody it was just like that's not really something i would i would think that they would say yeah yeah um, but other than that i mean for the most part the right for the, i think i think that i forgot i i didn't reiterate this i when i earlier in, in conversations when we talked about when i thought that the writing was bad it wasn't necessarily the entirety of the writing was bad it was like i would say like 90 90 10 because there was there was always like a one line that would just kind of come out and be like ah, that was kind of stupid oh yeah so yep. for the most part I've, I've i'm pretty sure i've given this show pretty high remarks since um i missed last week because of a power outage and uh i when matt hit the group chat this afternoon i was like oh yeah i forgot to watch it so i actually watched it this afternoon um, oh okay so life is, it's, it's pretty, pretty fresh fun, not mine being you weren't uh, able to join us for that, so let's kind of uh, recap for you since you, you you we hadn't heard your thoughts. What were your thoughts on the very last episode? Um, dude, I loved it. Um, it was, and for I wasn't sure where it was gonna go. The do what? It just wrapped up quick. Let's go, 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 go. We got a government to take down. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. dude. It, it, I mean, it was very um, it was very like the anticipation was just so thick in the beginning. I wasn't sure what was going to happen. And then when Rick jumped across the table and, and like took out old boy, life. I was like, Oh, so that's where we're going. But I really love the callback to biting the dude's throat out. Mm-hmm. It, it was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, the, cool I, replaying the, like all the badass yeah. Rick scenes from, from yeah, the walking this, dead like that. The, um, the, the using of walkers to pull the grenades was, was fantastic. That was, that was, you know, something we haven't seen before. I don't think. Um, and just, yeah. Mm. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh. oh, spice answers only. Whatever season contained Pope. I can't remember with that season 10. <clears throat> uh, my favorite season is still probably season four. Mainly for one episode, because really season two is my favorite season. But I still, you'll just never convince me that The Walking Dead will ever get better than the season four mid season fin- uh, uh, finale. Like it was, mm. I think yeah. Bob was actually asking, like, what, what is your Liz, literal favorite season? I like nature seasoning. Oh, spice answers. I thought he just oh. like spicy, spice. like make What's it sexy. Con- con- controversy. Uh, mm. seasoning or, or that um, spade L seasoning is pretty banging. I like Old um, A, I like uh, Montreal, and I've really started getting into the um, buttered garlic seasoning. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. Now, there's a dude on YouTube, I think it's is it stale. Is MLC back? Stale Cracker. All right, Stale Cracker. That dude talks about the Cajun two step. Man, that ain't no joke. It's pretty good, and they've got a spicy one too. Now, if I'm talking like sauces, there's a ghost um, ghost pepper sauce that I found at Walmart that's pretty good. Mm, I love ghost pepper. Yeah, I do too. It haunts but, me yeah. this day. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Oh, you're, with your $2, we can continue to do this <laughs> podcast. I can I'm pay Matt for another Seth, day. <laughs> I can pay Matt and Seth the 75 cents each for appearing on tonight's episode. Oh, I'm sorry, Matt. We're going. Look, your, look go. at Beaver oh. says still crack. Yes, yes, he is. Still cracker. Who's? Oh, that's the guy you were talking about with the. Yeah, oh, he does. He what? does a lot of like. Um, he he does a lot of like Louisiana style food. Is that um, dude with the mullet? Yeah, blonde the dude. That he does like crawfish boils. Like he yes. sh- like shows you how to do it, but he talks yes. like this yeah, dude. Like 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 yeah. yeah yeah yeah. I like that guy a lot too. I follow that him. Cool. Guy. Um, Seth, um, yeah, I was gonna say, Seth, like, talking about bad writing, like, you at least got to give props to RJ for like the best, um, acting ever of any actor. Look, 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 let me say something real quick. Let me just clarify something because we all made a comment last week about his acting not being the best, but I feel bad because the kid's getting like online bullied, ridiculous. Now, that's taking it a step too far. Like, we laugh and we can joke. He's a kid. I mean, nobody expects him to come out and nobody died. If anybody's been listening to this for a long time, if you'll remember, I'll say Judith's actress. I said I liked her, but she made everything sound Disney Channel-ish. You know, it's yeah. like, I'm Judith Grimes. Welcome to the Disney Channel. But, like, he's a kid, so don't online bully him. I mean, yes, his line delivery wasn't the best, but he also is a child. I mean, like, you know, he's not a seasoned actor like 
deny Guerrero or Andrew, you know, uh, Andrew Lincoln. So while I might have, you know, we might have made some comments about his line delivery not being the best. By no means, it please don't think we're adding to the online bullying. Because I didn't hear about that. Yeah. Like that, that's really happening. To I, did, I didn't either. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, there was a whole couple of articles I've read in the last few days where people are thumbed. people are giving him a hard time, like and it's it. like that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Um, but so for me, the good, the bad, and the ugly, the good, uh, I really enjoyed it. I definitely was anxious to, to see what happened next. I thought that, uh, for me, the good, believe it or not, um, which is probably not that shocking. I think Denai Guerrero is freaking awesome. And I think her as Michonne is freaking awesome. So yes, I was excited to see Rick back. Yes. Andrew Lincoln killed it. Cause he always does. He's a phenomenal actor but for me the the standout star of the the show was uh michonne i thought denai guerrero was just fan freaking tastic i think she's just like especially too going back and watching her through the show like she just played like i think she's got one of the most dynamic ranges of anyone on that show because michonne can be witty and funny and silly michonne can be the last person you want to see if you <laughs> got beef with somebody she can also be like caring and like she just has a wide range of emotions she can play yeah, where it's sometimes characters get a little one dimensional in shows like this like oh this dude's the beast this dude's the you know they all kind of have their little limited skill set whereas Michonne is a very complex multi-layered character so I think the good for me was Dana Guerrera as Michonne she killed it uh, the bad um, I do think that informations with Seth, I do. I'm with Seth. I do think some of the writing, not a lot, but some of it was a little, eh, you know, like it just didn't quite hit the mark. The ugly for me would be, um, I don't really have an ugly. There was nothing I hated about the show. I mean, I, what I dislike about the So the last episode, I liked it a lot, but I disliked it for the same reason that I disliked the last episode of the last of us. Just in the sense that I liked the episode. It was great. I still give it good reviews, but it felt a bit rushed. Like it felt like it was just like a race to the finish. Like, all right, this is the last episode. We got to squeeze in as much as we can. How are they going to, you know, because I feel like taking out an organization like the CRM would be like a whole season to itself. But, you know, you, you I, kill one top banana. It's like, all right, we're just shutting everything down, guys. We're good now. Well, I mean, and I get you know, they got they, someone lined up like they like it's not like a dick step. Where you pull out one leader, then boom, another one falls in their place. I mean, I get that they did a lot of damage, uh, but I don't really have too many bad things to say about it. I got kind of irritated with Rick more than anything. Like Rick, mm. that episode okay. where Rick just refused, like, I'm not going back. I can't, I can't, I can't. Like that got annoying because of how repetitive it was. I don't feel like you had to have had Rick say no that many times to get your point across that he was. You don't you understand, know. Michonne. I left my CDs in his car. Well, I just got tired of bitch Rick, honestly. Like, we got to see that with Negan. Like, we've seen Rick be submissive. And then it was just like, not this shit again. So, but other than that, I really liked it. I um, I kind of like Seth. I thought that Daryl was definitely the better of the two spinoffs. And now that this has come out, this is King for me, followed by Daryl Dixon, then followed by Dead City. Uh, the Book of Carol is going to be interesting because I watched a clip where they show in, you know, in the Daryl show, you know, Carol comes on the mic and says that somebody's back and it's, it cuts off the beginning. So you just hear like back, like it all. But if you go back and listen, it does sound like Rick. Like it sounds like he's back. <laughs> Tell a friend. It sounds like Rick's back. So now it almost, I wonder if that's going to be the plot of the Carol show is she's going to find Daryl to bring him back because Rick's back. You know what I mean? I think that's how they're going to connect those shows. I think that in the beginning of the Carol show, we'll see her meet Rick and Michonne again and reconnect. And then she's going to go off looking for Daryl. Only thing that wouldn't make sense. Well, I guess it does make sense. I was going to say that Rick wouldn't go with her, but Rick just got back to his kids. So I doubt Rick would leave again, but I think yeah. we'll see them make a cameo. The Ones Who Live is by far my favorite. The season finale could have been better, but it was only six episodes. Yeah, and that's kind of what the way I looked at it with uh, The Last of Us. It was the last episode was great, but it was I it felt very rushed. I mean, but at the same time, I get it. You've got a limited amount of time and a lot of story to tell. By no means did it detract from the overall value of the show. The Ones Who Mid. 
<laughs> yeah. The re reunion was pretty weird too. They just threw it in because they figured they needed the reunion. Yeah, I thought that, you know, I just feel bad for RJ. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I'm if, glad if, that they did get a reunion of some sort. I mean, which is interesting to think that's RJ's first time meeting his dad. Like he's, you know, never yeah. met Rick to this point. Judith probably has very faint memories of him, but oh, my wife's taking a shower. I was like, what the hell is that? Is that what that is? Yeah, I think it is. Anyways, but yeah. Um, so do y'all think, let's see, I was hoping for a better reunion with the kids. Do RJ makes me cringe. I mean, yeah, I, I get it. A hundred percent. His line delivery was not great, but also remember he is just a yeah. kid. He's, he's just a kid. Like yeah. he's, he's not never, been in it long enough to never you know. go after the actor. I mean, like it's not, it's not their fault of a bad, I mean, I guess it could be for a kid's standpoint, but like most of the time the actors are doing what they're told to do. Well, that's what I oh, used to yeah, say maybe. for, uh, that's what I used to say for Lori Holden that played um, Andrea. Like a lot of people gave her hate. And I'm like, dude, she complained about the script. Like she, yeah. you know, like she, that's not her fault. She's mm -hmm. an actor. She was given lines, given a script. And even if she didn't like it, if she wanted to get paid, she had to follow the script. I mean, even Andrea was very disappointed. Hey, in the way they get Andrea, so. Never go after the actor. I mean, you know, <clears throat> here's the fun yeah. question. Well, JP is getting dialed in. What was unsurprising, like in terms of like Walking Dead thematics for this for this series? Mine would have to be like one, they always survive explosions like less than a meter away. And two, I don't have a number two. Mine would just be that every time you meet a minor character, you know they're gonna die. Exactly. Yes, minor characters always die. For they me, always... that's the most predictable. And that probably would be the bad or even the ugly for me from good, bad, and ugly would be that every time we meet a new character, like you start the episode knowing they're going to die. Like it's it's just, you know, it's ridiculous. Just leave a void yeah. of like a wake of death and, and destruction in their path wherever they go. <laughs> yeah, it, it it definitely that to me was annoying. Like you, you meet Rick's side characters, and you know most of them are going to die, and they do. And then you meet Michonne's side characters, and you know they're going to die. And then anybody who's not Rick or Michonne is pretty much gone. I, I probably would say my biggest, one of my biggest complaints or disappointments with the show too is that Terry O'Quinn that played um, Beal or whatever his name Terry was. Beale. Like he's such a good actor, and I feel like he was such a wasted potential on on this role because I thought that he was going to be a much bigger presence. I'm not going to say threat because he was a big threat, but I felt like he was going to be a much bigger presence in the show, and I was so excited. And I mean, he barely got any screen time, and then when he did, Rick just chunked him with his own sword. You stabbed me right through the heart with this cutlass, my one weakness. I thought him stabbing him through the hand was pretty sick, though. That was cool. And then he pushed it on through. Mm -hmm. Hey, there's five people watching over on Rumble. What's up, Rumble? I see y'all comment in the hey, chat. Rumble. I got a rumbly in my tumbly. JP, are you are you with us? I hear very vigorous clicking. It's kind of, it's kind of laggy. But I don't know if you can hear me or not. I yeah, hear, can you. hear you. Come, okay. come to the light. Uh, yeah, well, I, don't, I don't have enough... Uh, capability to, to do visual i don't think i'll try it again but do you have so you know, as your internet if it if it messes up just cut the camera off because you know it's better to hear you than see you yeah. at that point jp and i've told you it's forward. time to upgrade from dial up man yeah <laughs> I, I don't have anything right now they can only afford 10 minutes of screen time for terry queen was just he was like 90 percent of the budget <laughs> I mean, he is a phenomenal actor, though. I mean, he's like, like he was hey, got to pay to play, baby. Amazing as John Locke and Lost, but that's 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 uh that's JP right now. JP, huh? Yeah. So we went over the good, the bad, and the ugly. So tell us what you liked about The Walking Dead. What you did? Well, the ones who live. What you didn't like? I mean, what you did like? What you didn't like? And what could have been a whole lot better? I liked where it ended up. My biggest gripe, you know, through the, uh, through watching it was just, uh, I thought it was kind of convoluted that they're blowing up their own cities. I was like, what's even the point of that? They're probably not going to give a, a good resolution, but the whole like uh, paramilitary industrial, like coup d'etat thing, by, by the time it was all said and done, the, the deep state coup that your boy from lost was into, I was like, well, they actually, 
I explained that to my satisfaction. He's just a power hungry Chop the uh, general off. type dude, and um, that that's his whole plan. He just wants to just trim off the fat yeah. and yeah, have a military dictatorship. So by the time it was done, I was like, all right, they they wrapped it up for me stronger than how it started. And that's even going back to the the world beyond and all the the lead up like CRM stuff. So now I was pretty happy once it was all said and done. What do you think? Uh, what do you think? So we did, we were doing the good, the bad, the ugly, which was kind of just spur of the moment, but like, so what's the, what's the worst thing? Like for me, I had said that I, you know, the two of the biggest things were a, anytime we get introduced to side characters, you knew they were going to die. It's just too predictable in that way. And then, you know, I felt like it was a little rushed at the end there, but I mean, that's just to pick something. I mean, overall, I like the show. I still give it, you know, good merits and definitely would recommend it to any Walking Dead fan. But what's what's something that you thought could have been a whole lot better? Not enough. Blood on I, I don't know, man. It, again, it was kind of slow burnish at first. And uh, what else? I mean, just typical kind of kind of walking dead side story type stuff but i, I was uh, i was happy by the time it was all said and done i'm trying to think of something like a little bit more specifically uh seth was talking shows. about like there were like there was just like some one lines that didn't really kind of stick the landing but the one like my favorite one liner was when when uh rick dissed jadis's haircut that was beautiful that was great yeah Best that was, one that was fantastic of, of the, very the, meta uh, series yeah I mean, she was rocking the doofus Rick haircut, so I mean, it was just not working. Was that line improvised? Like, like it feels like that would have been just just improvised on uh, during recording. <laughs> yeah, that is true. Like hand to hand combat, your life's in danger. You're like love doesn't die. <laughs> like they would step back and be like, "Really? What? <laughs> <laughs> well, you about to die? What you gonna do that now? Okay. From all right, um." So I'm guessing what's her face died. Rick's is like friend from the CRM turned enemy. Oh yeah, I think she definitely went up e either in the in the chlorine gas or detonation. But I don't. Well, I don't, he stabbed her, didn't he? Oh, maybe. I'm sure she was violently. Or or Michonne stabbed her, and she was just laying there like, ah. yeah, probably. Yeah, because I know with these shows, man, if you don't see them die, then. They might they not. They had her in the trash that. cans or something. I Wait, feel we, like I feel like guy if guy they do it, I feel like if they do a season two, that's going to be the plot: is that she survived and now she's on the war path to Alexandria to get revenge on Rick. Man, I'm, I'm gonna be thing. real. I wish I do feel all right. I do feel that this the I love the last episode, but I do feel it was rushed simply for the fact that they could have had a awesome second season out of them going back to the CRM and making like spending more. Oh, I mean, I mean that we, we predicted that. Yeah. Going in, that that was Go, going, they were going to do a big cliffhanger to, to open. Yeah. Open that's what I was kind of hoping for. And then it was like, Oh no. She I would immediately found through power. She conveniently found the, uh, the um, dossier in the, in the cat. She conveniently, like everything just kind of fell in order. The echelon briefing, like, we like to they, kill they people told makes Rick have no opposition. They like told the Rick that they that they were gonna give it to him. They never said when. So like they go back just to get this briefing that he doesn't know when he's supposed to get. Like, I don't know. Very rough. Yeah. Yeah. I think it could have been pushed out a little longer and it could have made for more the ending of season one could have been like, This is a this is bigger than we can chew. Like we need to we need to be better. We need to go in more tactical with this. See, I don't I like know the, like how negotiations are with AMC. They're like, 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 listen, like you get six episodes, you get this a lot of time, you're gonna have to make it work. Sorry, there's no wiggle room. Oh, dude, eight episodes would have been great. Oh that yeah, been, I think that would have been. Or they could have got an HBO season. Yeah. It would have been ten episodes. Would have been perfect. Yeah. Not the sixteen episode. Have to draw things out just to fill sixteen episodes, but. I also, if it was another, and this is just nitpicking, um, but I, I like seeing uh, Father Gabriel. I wish we could have gotten more of like Michonne filling Rick in on things. Like I would have loved to hear him reacting to hearing about like the whispers and hearing about, 
you know, who all's died since. Cause I mean, since Rick's left, a lot of people are gone. I mean, Rosita, um, uh, uh, Jesus, uh, I'm trying to think of everybody that's died since he left. Pretty I mean, much everybody. Quite a few. I mean, it's, you know, terror, Daryl <laughs> Henry, um, Enid. I mean, there's a lot of people that he probably would be expecting to reunite with that are no there longer are these alive. people. Oh, about that, Rick. Oh, nuts. Oh, I can't. Man. I can't sure. deal with it. But I would have liked to uh, to have seen a little bit more of that. But JP, if there's a season two, what do you what would you like to see from it? What do you think? It, what do you think they would even do a season two about? So I don't necessarily even want to see a season two. I definitely want to see these characters. I, I, I want to see more big picture Walking Dead stuff. I definitely want to see the main cast have a reunion and, and know the scope of like Rick's involvement now in the CRM and them flying the helicopters and what was that? I guess the Commonwealth at the end. So I want to know exactly scale. his. Yeah. So, I mean, I definitely don't want this to be the end of the story. I don't necessarily know that we, you don't need a season two, but I, like I said, I definitely don't want this to be the end of the story. I want the, the current like mini series to kind of season two of those to lead <laughs> into like one big all out war with whoever type thing. So I would, I would yeah. really love to see, um, reu more reunions, you know, like I, I really feel oh, like yeah. that's where they're going with the, the book of Daryl thing is I feel like she's going to go get Daryl and at the, I feel like we'll see Michonne and Rick at least make cameos in that. Oh, for sure. We, Jay Scarf says we need more racist people in the apocalypse. That like, didn't even get posted to the YouTube channel. They already got I, that one. Yeah, I don't, know that I, I yeah, don't know that I agree with you there, Grace, Jay Scarf. Yeah, that's I mean, funny. That's funny as hell. Okay, unless, unless you want it just to add, you know, like drama. But uh, the I YouTube thought gods would... didn't let them through. Yo, uh, speaking of Merle, um, let me pull up my Instagram real quick. I think he's the Michael Rooker is guest going to be a guest at uh my local Comic Con up Ooh. in Roanoke. Yeah, I saw um, that too, Seth. That looks pretty good. Yeah. What are the dates on that? Uh, you saw already said you're at the beach. I think. Man, oh, yeah, yeah I think right. I y'all are at the beach. We're, we're at yeah, we're at Myrtle that week. Mm. Dang. You know, I've never been to a legit Comic Con. Oh, it's dope. It's definitely a good time. I've been to our little local one, JP, that we had, but I don't know yeah, that. Yeah, I didn't get to go to that one. August third and deodorant, Seth, at, at Comic Cons, like a lot of folks just don't know how to use deodorant. Um, yeah, that. there's there's some. There's some stank. Yeah. A little bit stank. <clears throat> August third and fourth in Roanoke, Virginia. So anybody ah, local, always, see Michael Rooker. I always love that huh? picture, of Michael Rooker giving this because it's so creepy. Yeah. It's so creepy. It's, it's like a quagmire. He'd be a very scary librarian. I want to get see. I want to get him to autograph my Days of Thunder Blu-ray. Oh, dude, that'd be so awesome. That'd be. I want to try and think if I got anything that would. Well, I do have. So I had these sweet little porcelain Walking Dead figures. They're little, but I had bought them all from our comic book shop, and I think I pretty much had all of them. And bless my daughter's heart, she's bumped into the shelf about three times now. And my Rick Morgan, no, yeah, Merle's still up there, so I do still have the Merle figurine. But my Rick, my my Rick, and my uh, I know I've lost three of them. She's broke. I Rick Morgan, and there was one more that got broken. Um, my my local comic book shop has a ton of Walking Dead figures. Mm, um, I need some. I hadn't bought figures in forever, but I would like to get some more Walking Dead figures. There's a, uh, there, I'm pretty sure they got a Merle. That'd be cool. Yeah, so I've, I've got Merle like both zombie five for uh, for figurines. Do what? Now you got a tax refund this year. You got plenty of money for for figurines. I know. I was surprised. I actually got a refund. This all year. them, all them Dragon Ball statues you got to buy. Well, I normally get refunds, but it was my first year filing married, and I didn't Dang realize. It what that was going to entail. Yeah, I just need some information on W2. I bet that's all your woman, all your woman's got. Well, no, I'm just, no, no, I'm saying I didn't realize the breaks you get for that. 
Yeah, uh, I I did notice a little bit more when I, when Ash and I filed. Yeah, okay, I got a significantly higher refund than I did filing single. Significantly. Uh, let's see. Now, let's keep in mind time. though, you are getting getting her money on top of that. Like, it's not just yours. It's it's. Oh, yours. I mean, I, I you no, know, I mean, I get that. We've already we've already agreed. We're just gonna split it in half. I'm just saying, like, if you notice, like, a, a, a sizable return, it, it's it's factoring you both in for standard deduction and child credit, yada, yada, yada. Oh, yeah, the child credit definitely helped. Let's see. I never have anyone to go to Comic-Con with. I want to be Michonne and need to find some zombies or someone to be Rick. Someone does my makeup. I can play a good zombie. <laughs> yeah. Just get yeah. me 4.30 after work, and I'll, be, I'll pretty much be a zombie. Rick, no, I do. You have, I mean, do, JP, do you think we're ever going to get to see Daryl and, and Rick reunite? Yes, it's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, I they best the way I speak on his behalf. <clears throat> oh, get out of here, Smokey. No, I mean, if they they care about the fans at all, they gotta they gotta get the main <laughs> cast back together. Also, I need you, stripper home? I need you to get Smokey under control. I am tired of Smokey <laughs> ruining this podcast. No, Broken up families. Shut that bathroom door. Is Smokey the name of your mistress of the night? Hey, no, it ain't no or mistress. mistress. You know, no judging here. No, no mistress. No, no, no. Let's oh, see. Gosh. Good theory. Should have just made the finale an hour long so it wouldn't seem so rushed. Yeah, and that's another thing, too. I feel like if they were going to squeeze all that into the last episode, I was expecting that one to be like an hour and a half, an hour 45. So I was... Pretty, I was pretty surprised when it ended, and it was like just barely over an hour. I'm sure Did you guys notice the amount of uh, the amount of commercials in that in that show? Oh yeah, Men's Warehouse commercial was banging. I love that commercial. I will die for that commercial. Well, I mean, it. commercials are, are regional, I think, but uh, I just I had to hit the because see, I was watching it on DVR, so I had, had the ability to skip and. Um, I mean, I I hit the thirty second skip button probably eight or ten times. Eagle P, gas your car, run through the drive through, um, do your laundry, and it'd still be on the like thirty second skipper. JP will tell you a lot of those things I am doing doing during the episode. I'm like going to commercials and I'm coming over here setting us up for the podcast, and then I'm throwing a load of laundry in or I'm folding laundry. Or- you got to. You know, True. the commercial give me ample time to get a lot of that stuff done. If you file taxes, you got to utilize the commercial break. That is just, that is business 101 right there. Miss Sunshine, that is JP on the uh, black screen there. Yeah. He's, He's running on our, dial up right now. He's our founding father that can't apparently have internet. <laughs> Last time he was in nope. town, I gave him a few of my little AOL online CDs. We did make $2 tonight, so we might be able to contribute towards some good internet, at least for a month. I can get you 15 minutes of, uh, of broadband internet. I just need to get Starlink now. That's what my parents have. They love it. I always joke with my wife. You know, I, I pay the, the lion's share of bills in our household, but she, she pays for internet and grocery, which still ends up probably more than what I pay for everything else. Dude, is, um, it, is anybody yeah, going to tune into WrestleMania 40 tonight? Um, I can wrestle with you later if you like. I've got a few friends that are going live tonight to, to watch. I'll give you a good yeah. tussling, JP. Two of our friends were talking about it. I might try Apparently to the rock one. one. Mm. Wait, do what? Yeah, the rock's in it, right? Yeah, the rock Two. one. He they he, he he wrestled somebody last night and won. Is mm. all I know. I just wrestled <laughs> my internal demons. Mm. Mm. Side note: Does anybody else watch college basketball? I know Matt does some, a little bit. It's just it's just it's just too flip of a co- uh, too um, flip of a coin. It's just there's no predicting it. I think no, I, a lot of people. Now final four, it. like that's when like when, when when it really comes down. Well, to, the like, experts have been saying UConn was good. They they've been saying UConn and Purdue for a hot minute, and it, I mean they've been saying that since the beginning, and it's come down to UConn and Purdue. So no, college basketball is actually pretty. Like Joe, our good friend Joey, the giant. I, every year he's pretty spot on. He rarely. It's like if you study it, I guess you can get on it. But it's gonna be a good game. I'm excited for that. But one of our friends, Josh, needs everyone's thoughts and prayers. He was a big NC State fan, and when they lost out last night, I feel like a small part of him died. 
Well, I mean, it was it was Purdue. I mean, well, it was. Well, that's the thing, though. Purdue, like, who's Purdue other than this year? Like, they just blasted through this year and are killing it. And I think that's what sucked for him is like NC State hadn't made it this far in a very long time. And I was thinking, I think he was just so excited for a chance because I think it was like what was it, the eighties, seventies is the last time they won everything. So he was. Pretty stoked for it, and I feel like a small part of him died. So I know y'all don't know him, but so the last time UW won was before Brown versus Board of Education. Yeah, I def- I, I'm with you, Licker Beaver. I think UConn's going. I think it's going to be a good game, but I think they're going to wipe the floor with Purdue. They're just more well rounded. But anyways, yep. But uh, did you see uh, my snap today, Justin, of, of my son watching Coco Melon like the way Stone watches sports, just like standing in the living room in front of the TV watching Coco? Oh yeah, oh and he yeah. He watches Coco, Coco like Stone Man. watches sports. Do, 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 do. JP, what you think about Coco Melon? I, uh, Greatest show of sounds, all time. It sounds delicious. Whatever it is. Well, it's a bunch of children. Sprinkle some cheese on it. Ooh. <laughs> oh my word. <laughs> Oh, but before we wrap up, JP, since you got got in a little bit later, uh, okay. what's been up? What do you want to share with us? What do you want to share with the listeners? Uh, it's been a pretty productive Sunday. I got a little, a little more sun than I had planned, especially on my bald head. Uh, but no, no, solid Sunday. I was surprised that church they didn't talk more about the the well, they didn't talk at all about the impending apocalypse tomorrow. But oh yeah, oh, I don't know. Yeah, he said he clapped. So it'd be like two through four p.m. for for uh, totality in our area. Not the yeah. yeah. I think Sarah said it was like oh. gonna start around two, and then by three fifteen it should start. So if the world ends, I'm gonna have to work a full Monday. This is some bull, right, dude? Right. That's like that. I think you should leave sketch where he talks about how he thought he was gonna get eaten by a monster, and he's like, you know, I knew it was a pig, but in those <laughs> few seconds when I thought it was real, the first thought that came to my mind is. Well, I'm gonna die. At least I don't have to go to work tomorrow. Really? That was like <laughs> somebody. I seen it. I just seen a meme on Facebook. It said, uh, "Flat Earth Eclipse gonna be banging tomorrow." <laughs> <laughs> What's that line across the sun? <laughs> That's the bat boner signal. <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, I don't know. We'll try to find something to pop up and podcast about. I mean, we do have the book of Carol coming up uh, up pretty quick too. If if people want to hear about uh, what is start uh, the boys season four. Well, the boys, and uh, I wouldn't mind podcasting about the Fallout show. That looks pretty darn good. Love the series. I don't know anything about Fallout, so yeah, that'd be cool because I'd like to watch that. And I can come at you guys with a a non fan perspective. I played New Vegas maybe four. New Vegas I, did, is... I didn't play like the whole series. I'm not like a super fan. I liked it, but I just, you know, I got into it later. But oh, um, I played New Vegas a million times over and over. Yeah, New Vegas was really have... good. That was my first Fallout game was New Vegas. Three was good, but New Vegas was was it for me. That, that was 2010. Speaking of which, uh, favorite band, favorite album, good news for people who love bad news by Moss Mouse, 20 years old this week. Mm. Wow, that's one of my favorites too. It's my more favorite. <laughs> I like it more than you do. Probably. <laughs> but it's pretty solid. So I've been to three Modest Mouse concerts. You can't you can't beat that. No, I've never seen them in There's person. nobody that's seen them that, that many times live and lived to tell about it. <sighs> oh, yep, we are getting old. That is a great album though. But anyways, I think that's going to wrap it up. We'll definitely see you for the Book of Carol. I'm sure we'll find some excuse to see you between now and then. But, hey, you don't have to miss us. Just go over to Patreon. I mean, like a dollar a month if you want to do more. That's true. But if not, a dollar a month is fine. You can hang out with us every Friday night, and we talk about a little bit of everything. So make sure to check it out. Also, if Seth could put in his link for his channel, you can follow that link there. It'll give you all the information. Bless you, JP. Devil be oh, gone. Oh, it is sorry. Sunday after all. Oh, was that Smokey? What are you and Smokey doing over there? Why is your nose so... Oh, I don't caught a, caught a case of the, the chills. Someone got a case of Monday. The chills? Yeah. They'll bring that into work tomorrow. I don't want the chills. No, just caught a chill. Oh, okay. 
That's but, the yeah. you, boy. Get it out of you. But also, let's see. I'm literally Dale Grimes. That's your name? Yeah. I'm Rick Grimes. Oh. I'm Rick James. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Rick James. But we enjoyed getting to hang out with you a little bit, and we will do it. Uh, everybody says the apocalypse is going to start tomorrow. I'll be in my basement. Uh, I will see y'all around. If we don't yeah. see you guys after tomorrow, just know that we loved you. You're all beautiful. Oh, shit. We love Smokey, too. Despite the hey, uh, that he gives, she gives just, apparently the apocalypse started tonight at JP's house. <laughs> I was hey, just, just, because, uh, just because we didn't do it earlier, when we got a super chat in, oh, here's sure a little. Did. Yeah. Mm, so good and tasty. Also, let's give a little Dale face. I can't close out without some Dale face. Now, <laughs> and maybe also a little. This is the kind of thing that just tickles my balls. It's going to be JP tomorrow telling everybody he was right about the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> As a giant chasm Whoops. opens, we all fall into a pit of fire. JP's just like, this. I, I right. love being right. This is the kind of thing that just tickles my balls. Well, with the CERN, <laughs> CERN portal opening up, we might be in that lake of fire. And, it's hard to say. And the red heifer, the uh, red heifer, uh, what's the, the sacrifice? Got to be before the Passover. Whole... All I know, JP, yeah. is I fully expect your ass apocalypse or not. You better be at work tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if a chasm opens up and y'all fall into a bit of fire. You better be at work. <laughs> I know what kind of man you are. So funny. <laughs> oh, hey, JP, he did you see himself? that? Uh-huh. JP, did you see that video I sent with, with the boomer and, and, and uh, conspiracy theories? You need blackout curtains because of North Korea. I don't know if I saw that one or not. I it's, might it's, have. it's on the podcasting, uh, the podcasting dead Facebook thread, but just very like boomer conspiracy. Alexis, I oh. do not give you consent to listen to my personal conversations. <laughs> I did see that. I need blackout to it. Because of North Korea. I will have to enjoy that. Well, but anyways, it's going to be nice to get to bed before midnight tonight. So we're going to go ahead and wrap it up, but we'll see you soon. Again, patreon.com slash the podcasting dead. Come hang out with us. Uh, in the meantime, I'm Justin. I'm Jeff. I'm Maddie Dubs. JP here. Oh my God! Okay. Say hi, Smokey. The world is gonna Hello, end tomorrow. Smokey, Smokey, Smokey. Stop talking to JP's prostitute like that. You don't need. To, you don't need to smoky. demean her in that way. Uh, what she's talking about? Oh my word! <laughs> you okay, All JP? Right, they'll be gone at, at at the JP residence. We're good. Maybe I'll take a Benadryl tonight. Are you sitting Just on the toilet careful. right now? It sounded no, it very bathroom really cool. echoey in there. Do I need to end the stream uh, now? <laughs> it's probably <laughs> you hear like a little. <laughs> if the world ends, goodbye, guys. We love you. Have a good night. Make make the sound, JP. Make it. <laughs> I don't make those kind of sounds. Uh, if you want to hear about how JP had some delicious steak at my house and soiled his uh, vehicle uh, on the way home, you can go check it out on Patreon. <laughs> Oh, it was Patreon, right? Ain't that what you talked about? Oh, yeah. <laughs> JP, what are you doing to her? What do you mean by that? You need to say, Ons. <laughs> Jeez, oh, oh, my I thought Matt <laughs> snorting was bad. I didn't snort too bad tonight. No, not at all. I don't remember hearing you snort. And then JP just made up for all of it in one time. It works. <laughs> Oh, my word. <laughs> what are you I would cut your camera on. I want to know what you're doing right now. Like, give us a quick glimpse into your life. Cut the camera it on. Won't, it won't do it. It, won't do it. it will do it. It, for the it will do it. It will do it. Do it, JP. I have the ability to cut it on, JP. Do it. Cut it on. I, Executive. I tried to. Hold Show on. them big, beautiful cheeks clapping. See, it just goes to a black screen. Ah. Uh, you are you are y'all in there with the lights on? No, the lights are on. See what wiggles. <laughs> I can't say. All right. Well, I think that is gonna wrap it up. But thank you all so much for joining us, and we will see you soon. Um, bye-bye. bye bye. Yeah. Bye.